you guys, it's Marcy Sauter, the Rusty Blonde. Welcome back to my channel today. I thought I would come on today because my channel's gonna look a little bit different the next month or two. And so I'm here to share with you guys the backstory of why that is so that you can know what to expect. A little over a month ago, we found out that one of my sisters and her family are going to be moving. And that's really hard because we've all been together and I say that it's uh, mommy and daddy and I have four sisters and all five of us have been here together for the last, what, 13 years, something like that. And so it's pretty devastating to find out that one of them has to move. Well then my husband, um, my husband and son were racing and so they were racing from our light pole to my parents' light pole. And next to my parents' light pole, there is a little box. I don't know if it's a cable box or phone box or what. My husband had to hurdle over that. And when he did that, he fractured his knee joint. He had to go with no weight bearing on his left leg for at least two weeks and then they would monitor that. At the end of that two weeks, we had found out that my Nana in Colorado was not doing so well. She is a hundred and a half. I think that happened on either a Tuesday or Wednesday. We got that phone call and so we decided, okay, well, Thursday, my husband had his knee appointment and I had to do all the kids laundry and get us packed and everything. So I think it was Wednesday that we found out and talked to Nana. And then Thursday we were prepping. I was laundry, I was doing laundry and packing food and packing clothes and all this stuff so that we could leave super early Friday morning. I'm sorry, it must have been Tuesday and I was getting prepared on Wednesday because it was Thursday morning when we got the call that my Nana had passed away. So she had a really rough night and I'm just so grateful that my Aunt Gina and Tara could be there by her side and with her all night. It was just hard for us because we weren't there, not only for Nana, but we weren't able to be there for Aunt Gina and Tara. I think that was around 8.30 when we found out. Um, my husband had his doctor's appointment at 10.30 and they sent him in for an ultrasound because he was experiencing some really weird pain in his calf. So Nana just passed away and he goes to his appointment, goes to get an ultrasound. They had him wait out in the waiting room and then they came out and said, you need to take, you need to go right back to your doctor's office. He's expecting you. And so my husband calls me to let me know. And I'm like, geez, well, at least they're not sending you to the hospital, right? But that means it's something that they need to discuss with you. So he goes all the way back to the doctor's office and all three doctors were in there. And turns out my husband had two blood clots in his leg. That is scary in itself, but then they told us there would be no traveling, that he could not go to Colorado, which we all know when you have blood clots, no, that's the last thing you wanna be doing. Anyways, now we, it was even worse. Now we found out we couldn't go to Colorado on Friday morning as planned and, oh, it was, we were just a mess. We were devastated, we were heartbroken, we, wanted to be there for my aunt and cousin so bad and we weren't able to go and that was that was just an emotional battle right there like and so that was that we couldn't go well then the following day um some close family members came by and we were we were told that one of them had cancer and that they were starting chemo and radiation on monday so my sister's family is moving away. Nana passed away. My husband has blood clots in his leg. We can't go to Colorado. And now we find out that a family member has cancer and 
going to have to go through all of that. So that was a lot. It was a lot to handle. Um, it's just broken heart. More broken. Then that following week, that Thursday, I have my annual PAP appointment with my OBGYN. And now this is a little bit of back history, but uh, last year I had to do what's called a LEAP procedure. And if you guys don't know what that is, it's basically they do, um, your, you go in for your annual, you know, they swab everything, send it off. Well, it came back that I had um, some pre-cancer cells that had developed on my cervix. And um, so I ended up having to have the procedure to remove the bad cancers or the pre-cancer cells. And if I chose... Well, you have to remove them or else it will turn into cervical cancer. So I had that whole procedure done. And when that happens, when you go through that, you have to go for annual paps every six months instead of once a year, once every five years, depending on your age and whatnot. So I had one back in February and then this one was this week. So I did that and in that I found out um, she asked if I wanted my thyroid check, and I was like, no, because I go to my family doctor. Um, he prescribes my medication that I'm on, um, so he checks my thyroid every year, and so I didn't feel like she needed to check it. Well, she came up to the table, and she goes, here, I'm just going to check your thyroid. And it could have been because because of the questionnaire. I have extremely dry skin. I've never been regular with going potty. Um, it's been a struggle for 20 years. And then the other thing was fatigue. Around 2 o'clock every afternoon, I just hit a wall. I'm exhausted. Anyways, I don't know if it was because of those questions and how I answered them, why she wanted to check my thyroid, but she came over and she checked it and she goes, yep. I'm going to have to send you to get an ultrasound. And I was like, what? An ultrasound on my thyroid? Like, what's wrong with it? I'm like, okay, well, should I be worried? And she said, um, no, we're just going to do the ultrasound so it covers all of our questions. It covers all bases and we have all of our questions answered. I'm like, okay, no problem. So they did blood as well. And then she moved on with the exam. And when I laid back on the table and opened up my gown for her to do a breast examination, um, again, another backstory for those of you who don't know or are new here. I had a weight loss VSG surgery almost six years ago. And then two and a half years ago, I went and had the excess skin removed. So I had a tummy tuck and I had implants put in. So back, she went to do the exam and she goes, when did I last see you? And I said, of February, she goes, didn't we talk about you getting this fixed? And I was like, yes. Okay, she goes, well, you have a breast implant in encapsulation. And she goes, it's pretty severe. And she goes, have you contacted your plastic surgeon like we went over in February? And I was like, no, my plastic surgeon is in Brazil. I didn't tell her that back in February because I had no idea that this condition would just continue to get worse. So she goes, oh, you need to find a plastic surgeon here then and you need to go see them as soon as you can and get this corrected. I'm like, are you talking about surgery? And she said, yes. So I was like, oh my God, okay, I guess I need to get this fixed. Well, oh, so now I have to go get my thyroid, an ultrasound on my thyroid and I have to contact my husband and tell him what's going on with my breast implants. Anyways, he looks up and he finds a couple doctors here in the valley that are pretty good and up there on the list for plastic surgery. So now I have to start calling them and my insurance to figure out what's gonna happen there and if it's gonna be covered and things like that. Well, after speaking with the two doctors and then, um, insurance, I find out that basically in this situation, there are three options. The first option is having your implants completely removed, removing all the scar tissue, and then you would have to have plastic surgery to remove all of the excess skin, um, which I 
don't want to do that unless I have to. So I'm like, okay, what's the second option? Well, the second option is removing the implants and putting in new implants. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's all it takes. Well, with that, when you have a breast encapsulation or a breast implant encapsul encapsulation, um, when you just do a revisionary implant surgery, um, the chances of it reoccurring are at 80%. And not only is are your chances greater, it comes back way faster than it did the first time. So, and I'm like, okay, and then what? Well, then you have to go in for another revision surgery to do the same thing. Remove the implants and put new ones in. And it's a vicious cycle of having to do that over and over and over again, ultimately leading to option number one. Or option number three and I'm like okay well what is option number three well option number three is having what's called a stratus procedure which is basically they call it a medical mesh it's a biological mesh skin that they basically have to insert and then sew to the tissue basically it acts as a barrier to the implant which increases your chances from it happening from 80% to 10%. So there's a 90% su success rate once you get this stratus procedure done. I'm like, well, obviously that's the option to go with, except for the fact that insurance doesn't cover it. And the stratus procedure alone for just the material, $18,000 outrageous. I'm like, what do people do? I do not have $20,000 lying around. I don't have $1,000 lying around to do this type of medical procedure. Like, how do people do this? She's, you know, and then she says, well, people finance it. Okay, $18,000 at a minimum. That's just for the material. Like, what do you do? I mean, maybe there are some people that have been successful with doing the revision and not having to do it again and again, but that's not what they made it sound like on the phone. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to contact my aunt in Brazil and figure out if she can get in touch with my doctor and figure out if he does this type of procedure. So my aunt gets in touch with the doctor and finds out that, yes, they do do it there, and it is a fraction of the cost to top things off, everyone, not everyone, a few people who love us and care for us, you know, have mentioned, well, you know, you could do the surgery here and just get a loan for it. Take out a second on your house, use the equity in your home. Well, I'm not able to use the equity in my home to get a loan because I have a problem. I have an addiction. My addiction is a shopping addiction and spending money. And my husband and I have been married 16 years and I have managed to put us in an awful position, which is refinancing our house to cover up my horrible, horrible spending addiction. I've always known it was there, but, and it's always been okay to joke about it and mess around about it. But now we're talking, I've refinanced my house once with my husband early on in our marriage too to fix it and get ahead. Well, then I managed to do it again. And so we then refinanced our house again. Now, each time it's worked a little bit in our favor because the interest rate was lower each time. So it's just been all around great. But now I've managed to do it again, only this time we are not refinancing our house. And 
Now on top of that I've done it again, I have a medical procedure that needs to happen and I need a minimum of 20 grand to get it done. So none of this came out until my mom and my sister were like, let's all go to breakfast and so we can just talk about life and what everybody's going through because all of us in our family, we all have our different paths we're on. We all have different obstacles that we are having to go through and manage. And so we were all like, yes, great. This is awesome. Let's go have breakfast. Well, it was the third or fourth time that somebody had mentioned just using the equity in our house or refinancing our house or taking out a second on our house. And so I had to open up and tell my mom and my sisters that I have a shopping addiction that is real and it is severe. Um, and it's really hard to come out and say that because, you know, I try so hard in so many other areas and, but I've just, I've been tied to this chain and I can't do it anymore. I mean, look at the situation I put my family in. I've always been good. I've always been responsible as far as paying bills or making the payments on time. I've never been late. All of my bills are automatically deducted. I've always been able to manage the cash well, but I had this hidden secret that I hid from a lot of people. And I hid a portion of it from my husband. So, well, it was a game. I thought I was hiding it. He's known all along. It's been, it's been hard. It's been a struggle. So because of my decisions that I've made and my spending and all of that, I have come to the realization that that only leaves the option of going to Brazil, which I'm fine with, but I'm gone away from my family for at least a month. I'm having surgery, which I am fortunate to where my aunt is just amazing. And my mom's whole side of the family is there. And I will, I will be taken care of. It's just the fact that I have to leave my husband and leave my kids for a month again. And it's not by choice this time. I was told that I have three or four months, six months max before this thing in my chest, in my breast becomes an emergency situation. Anyways, we've kind of come to terms with that. My family and my sisters have been really supportive. So after you guys knowing the past history of not only myself and my problem, but with this past month and what my family has gone through, my channel is going to be revamped a little bit for now. I am literally going through shopping detox. It's, you guys, maybe some of you out there understand the feeling or maybe some of you out there will realize, oh, maybe I have a shopping addiction too. But it is real and it is hard and it is a struggle every day. And so how this is going to go is I have to pack a certain way to go to Brazil. And um, so I can do all of my travel bags and things like that. But while I'm there, I am only going to be doing videos about me, my procedure, my progress, my struggles, and all of that. And in the meantime... I am also going to be doing a shopping addiction video series. So everything I've gone through, um, the way of thinking, the things I've done, I decided I'm going to open it up because maybe there is somebody out there who is struggling with the same thing, who needs some help and guidance. And I am going to utilize my YouTube channel 
for that. And the third thing, so I'm going to be doing my Brazil trip, which is for a medical major procedure, my shopping addiction. And the third thing is, is my friend um, who has had VSG surgery, which that has been a struggle for her as well, but I we have been doing recordings on that as well, so there will be a video series on her experience and that whole thing as well. So that is kind of where my YouTube channel is going until I get back from Brazil and am better, but um, I just wanted to keep you guys informed. I will not have hurt feelings if you decide that my channel, that you want to leave my channel um, for those of you who do decide to stay, thank you. Um, the support means a lot to me. And um, if you know anyone who is going to be going through similar struggles in their life, maybe my channel could help them. But um, anyways, I just wanted to open up with you guys and let you know where I've been the last month and what's really been going on and happening. And... Tomorrow I have my thyroid appointment, so I find out if it's, oh, which I, I don't even think I even mentioned, but it turns out my ultrasound, I have nodules on my thyroid, so I'm being sent to a specialist. Well, that appointment is tomorrow, and so tomorrow I find out what I need to do from there, whether it's medication and just annual checkups and whatnot. Hopefully that's all it is and then what I can do to prevent it from getting worse or to help heal it. So on top of that, tomorrow is a big day. I find out, I go to my thyroid appointment and then I will be finding out from my surgeon in Brazil when I need to fly and go there and have my procedure. So it is going to be bam, 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 like super fast. So I wanted to get this video up and out there for you guys. So you guys, thank you so much for all of the support, all of the love. I just can't thank you guys enough for being the kind-hearted people that you are and have been for me. And um, I hope that that can continue. I could really use the support. But I will obviously be keeping you guys posted and updated and you will see all of the different things I've mentioned, my journey going to Brazil. Um, just it's kind of going to kind of turn into a vlog, an emotional vlog of Marcy's everyday life, but and how it's going. So I will keep you guys all updated and informed on everything as it comes. So Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Thank you. Bye.